kind of go live. I thought I'd uh, take a quick look at uh, the Festung Hamburg. The day the Elbe turned red, thin red line games. The C3 module number three, the North German plane, built on the healthy bones of the fifth core system, which uh, was called the central front system, along with a hefty, uh, comprehensive dose of NATO division commander. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a bastard child, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a bastard child of SPI titles. It's pretty cool. Uh, so I thought we'd have a look at it. I, uh, now as everyone may recall, I'm not a super huge fan of uh, this particular system. I really prefer the under an iron sky system better. Hey, Mo, good to see you, mate. Uh, by the way, do we have a show Tuesday night? All things considered, let me know uh, in chat or in DM. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> not a huge fan. And, and so I was chatting with uh, Fabrizio and he's like, Come on, man. I'm going to send you a copy anyway. I know you're not a big fan. I want you to try it one more time. So here I am, <laughs> right? So I didn't purchase this. This is a complimentary copy, and I'm, I'm very, very appreciative of it. Uh, I will endeavor at some point this year to get, to get this to the table. Uh, I, got a, I don't even know how many maps are on this little bad boy at all. I think it's just one map. I don't know. But we'll have a look in a sec. Uh, there's nothing back on these anyway. Uh, so let's just jump into it and have a quick look. And I, I've got some coffee on the side here and a piece of toast. And <clears throat> it's one of the reasons why I'm choking. It's that nonsense, uh, 12 grain stuff. It's supposed to make you healthy. Two D10s, <clears throat> some card things so that we can have options. Operational procedures. This is going to be just, uh, a little overview on movement orders and bombards and stuff like that kind of how to's examples of play is what most other people would call it uh rules of play now look rules are not hard rules are not complicated uh there's only i'm going to say 20 pages 23 there you go 23 pages of rules nice case-based system easy comprehensive to follow you're uh basically uh, one of these things, one of the things you have to do, and we'll see here in the system in a second, is uh, you've got to give units orders, uh, just like in NATO Division Commander, and the ab the ability to be in a specific mode takes a certain amount of time, and each particular mode has a certain movement rate, certain combat uh, attack factor, defense factor, other other elements and stuff like that, and that's where that's really the interesting, meaty, groovy part of the game. But sometimes, just like with NATO Division Commander, kind of all boil down to the fact that you're really going to be in one of two modes, right? Uh, you know, some sort of attack movement mode or prepared attack or hasty attack, basically. Uh, that's that's what that's what I found anyway. And there's a piece of that 12 gram bread. Thanks for playing. All right. Uh, coordination is complex is the complexity in the system. Yeah, that's right. Hey, John, good to see you. Charles, good to see you. Look at it. Everybody, uh, yeah, there's some card things. <laughs> we'll get back to the cards in a second. I need to have a look in the rules because it's been a while. I don't even know if my old, I don't have access to my other cop, my other titles in this series. So I can't tell you uh, what the cards do uh, from memory. Uh, so I would have to look at the rules to do that. So, uh, so this is scenarios and the specific scenario, specific rules and uh, how are we going to handle surprise and belt tap? And then there's all sorts of other bits and pieces in here. And then, you know, Armageddon can happen if nukes start uh, flying. Uh, then we've got, uh, so scenario one, probably a nice little introductory scenario. Scenario two, sickle shadow, a little bit more comprehensive. And you can see the sections of the map that it covers. <clears throat> Three, four, and then a campaign. Okay, the North Stygian Plain. Very nice. Oh, a second campaign. Huh, cool. One minute to midnight. What's the difference with this one? <coughs> Interesting. Okay. 
I don't know if it feels like this. One more, unless there's designer notes at the back. Yeah, designer notes. There we go. Now, I, I owe Fabrizio posting these designer notes. I haven't told him yet, but I don't think I can find the file he sent me, so I need to ask him to send it again. Uh, I was supposed to post them a couple of weeks ago. It's been a crazy month here. And by the way, Anthony uh, Moffat, or Moffat has uh, been very instrumental in helping uh, Fabrizio with this system and, uh, and helping it be uh, more uh, playable and uh, uh, getting the OB correct. And Nicholas is involved this time. I bet she's given those Frenchies a bit of a boost, eh? Uh, <clears throat> Did I say Muppet? No, I said Moffat, didn't I? Whatever. No one's going to watch the video anyway, so don't worry about it. It's all good. Uh, uh, all right, so what do we got? One map. So let's have a look at the map. Let's get through the charts first, eh? <clears throat> Ground combat. Lots of modifiers for uh, combat in this particular game. You've got, uh, and I'll hold this closer so you can look. I'm not going to read it all, but there's the sequence of play for combat and then a swag of modifiers here, terrain modifiers, all right, where's the CRT, let's have a look at that, yeah, and then one of the things, you know, one of, one of my little niggles here is, oh, he's got some color in the charts now, nice. So movement tables, depending on whether you're mechanized, motorized, or foot, in column, tactical, or deployed, all right? Uh, all the different obstacle types, terrain features, and then all the different orders, uh, depending on whether you're doing a battalion or brigade or divisional move or assault or refit or to put moving into defense mode. And the Warsaw Pact have its own unique uh, movement and uh, order capabilities, bombard tables, interdiction tables, attack combat support, ground combat table. So we get to a final modifier. And if you start looking at some of these results, you'll see that, you know, there's, there's not a huge difference between a plus four and a plus five uh, on the combat differential on the results. So often there's a lot of, a lot of work trying to factor scrounge and grab uh, modifiers and get that extra, can, should I use electronic warfare for that plus one? And sometimes it just really doesn't matter. Sometimes you're better off just rolling the dice and getting after it. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say here, I think. Uh, you've got combat uh, and defender, sorry, defender and attacker combat support uh, charts. And then air points and disengagements that you, if you want to disengage, you've got to be able to do that effectively. Nice breakdowns on all the different markers and what they all are and what they do. Here we can see the combat units with all the explanations of what they are. And here's a, a typical order posture chart, uh, counter I should say. So you'll be in attack movement mode. You're going to get a, uh, a, a malice to your uh, uh, bombardment. Oh, can you see something, bud? You can't see anything, Fabrizio? Uh-oh, Fabrizio's here. Hopefully he, had, he didn't hear what I said earlier. Uh, so attack combat mods, defense uh, combat mods, uh, the order issuing times and the CP cost for all those. So you've got all that good stuff here. He must be, uh, he must be uh, listening, I guess. Engineering works markers. And it looks like there's a few different types of capabilities here uh, that weren't in the other modules that I've played. There we go. All right. Okay. So interesting stuff there. Here's your postures flow chart. Allows you to move from screen to uh, defender to uh, reserve defense. I think that is, I would have to, I would have to look these up because uh, it's been a while since I've touched the game. Uh, barrage, for support units, you can be in barrage mode or refit mode, uh, road mode, tack mode, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, right? So, very cool. And you get little icons to tell you what all the different units are, just in case you uh, care about that sort of stuff. There they have them. All right, uh, orders of battle for both sides. I'm going to make sure that 
There's nothing on the back. There we go. And then uh, you're going to need these charts here uh, for the Warsaw Pact and for NATO to keep track of all your different formations and units and what uh, what time they're going to be able to deploy into their new posture or their new mode, as I like to call it. And it's all done by, by hours across the top here. And then you've got command points, engineering points, and electronic warfare, and air, air and stuff. And you get these groovy little markers that go on the counters uh, and tell you this guy can't move or this, can't, this guy is in mode change and he'll, he'll execute that at H12, right? Or at H00, as the case may be. All right, so <clears throat> there's those. There's markers on the back, obviously, as well. And then you've got the different modes. And you can keep them all off to one side. You don't have to have these uh, spread all over the map. That's all fine and good. Let's see what we got here. And uh, step loss markers, which I think are cute little dog tags. That's all groovy. Nukes. These are some of the uh, regimental and divisional uh, markers that you will, when you're assigning orders. And then the actual combat units. And here we go. Let's give you a look at those. I guess they're the East Germans, more than likely. And then NATO chappies. Got some Dutch, and we've got the Germans here. More markers. Now, Fabrizio, you'll be happy to know that I uh, I told everybody that I will be attempting to play this uh, sometime this year, in 2023. All right, now let's have a look at the map. Now, the map's actually quite substantial, so I'm not sure I need to move my coffee and my toast. Really. And in fact, uh, you know what, uh, Fabrizio, why don't you, uh, if you could type in what the if you can what the cards are used for again i i forget uh having not played in quite a while and i feel kind of silly not knowing what they're for so maybe you could type that in that'd be great all right let's see if we can open this up going live going hot here we go so hamburg big Metroplex, Lubeck. I've actually got my. Ah, it is the biggest map. Uh, events and actions. Thanks, Mum. And then goes all the way across to Bremen and Oldenburg up here in the north. You can see Bremerhaven here. Hey, the Duck Overlord, what is up? There we go. <clears throat> All right. And, you know, it's got that uh, sort of uh, Spartan, uh, what's the right word I look for? Spartan military uh, ut utilitarian vibe uh, going on here. That color palette, uh, the uh, the markings on the map, the, the way, way things are laid out. It's information rich versus being uh you know kind of a more of a artsy artsy map i like it very nice all right there you go folks so look that's uh that's a and i love the thick uh the thick paper uh, on these maps and it's also got uh some sort of uh, latex uh it feels like latex anyway uh, or some sort of waterproofing to it perhaps that I'm not going to actually tip water on it. <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. But it feels like it's got a, uh, a, a coating to it that will protect the, uh, the map. And I love the fact that we're using a printing process that is allowing the dyes to soak into the paper. And because the paper's nice and thick, the colors are very vibrant and uh, you're not getting this cracking that occurs. You know, GMT games have been suffering from that a lot recently. 
I've noticed that they've changed their printing methodology, or maybe they just change, they change based on uh, what, what, whatever the quote is for how many however many units they're they're making. I don't know. You know what? I'm not going to try and follow this up right now. I always have the hardest time with your maps, Fabrizio, for <laughs> getting them back back in the way they, they they're supposed to be folded up. But there you have it, right? Uh, and Fabrizio. I, I uh, mentioned earlier on in the video that I may need uh, you to resend me your, des your designer notes because I can't find your email with that document uh, for the designer notes, bud. And uh, <clears throat> so there you go. Let me see what we got here in terms of question. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I'm going to uh, let this little puppy wrap up. Excellent. Look, let's let's keep uh, context in mind here. I, I posted earlier on uh, today or last night, maybe I was just frustrated with, with people complaining about production values and errors, some minor, <clears throat> some some less than minor uh, issues with some publishers. He is a small publisher, literally a guy and his dog or cat, depending on uh, what pets Fabrizio has, and a couple of buddies helping him out. And he works with the local European uh, production companies. And the quality here is really second to none, uh, both both from a, a, a quality, uh, end product quality in terms of the counters, maps, production values, the artwork on the on the books on the boxes is always very interesting and uh, smart and thematic, right? And then the the other thing is that the QA, the quality assurance, limited errors. So uh, it just goes to show that a, if a smaller company can do it, I know they're only producing, you, you know, Fabrizio is only pushing out one or two games a year. But if a smaller company can do it, bigger companies can get it done right as well. And we can pay attention to the detail. And I appreciate that. But I also think we've got to, we've got to give some of these companies a little bit of a slack because uh, even though you are small uh, or smaller than GMT, for instance, uh, you, you know, mistakes can still happen, particularly if you've got a broad range of developers and designers and stuff like that. Anyway, just a little sidebar comment on, on folks being... Uh, being difficult with manufacture with uh, publishers i think we give them, need to give them all a little bit of grace but we also should celebrate the guys that get it right like thin red line games all right all the best everybody i don't know for brazil if there's any but any le any copies left to purchase so uh it's kind of moot for me to say hey go to the website and check it out because you might be too late but there may be a handful of copies uh, floating around depending on orders that cancelled or whatever the case may be so ping Fabrizio directly if you are interested in, in getting a copy and I'd encourage you in the future, get on the list so you get your, get your copy because the secondary market tends to blow up with these games because the print runs are small and they're limited and reruns do not happen very often. All right, all the best. Congratulations Fabrizio on doing a great job here. This is fantastic. There we go, 10 to 15 copies left. All right, all the best folks, I'm gonna let you go. Thanks for that uh, comment there for Brizio regarding the, uh, where the copies are, et cetera, et cetera.